I'm Captain Bill Gustin with Miami-Dade Fire Rescue Training and Safety Division. This is the first in a series of videos on the basics of water-based fire suppression systems. In this first video, we will follow the water from the water main to the tip of the nozzle or the deflector of the sprinkler head. As buildings become taller and more complex, so has their fire suppression systems. Both the lives of occupants and firefighters depend on properly operating, testing, and maintained fire suppression systems. Knowing the component of suppression systems is not just the job of Fire Prevention Bureau personnel. Line firefighters will be the end users of these systems and therefore must be familiar with them. The objective of this video is to follow the water from the water main to the tip of a nozzle or a deflector of a sprinkler head. So let's follow the water. Starting at the right, we see piping coming out of the ground that connects the water main to the suppression system. The water flows through an outside stem and yoke valve, an OS and Y, and through a double one-way check valve backflow prevention device. This device is to prevent contaminated water in the suppression system from flowing back into the drinking water supply. The two OS and Ys are used to isolate the backflow device for service or replacement. Downstream of the backflow, we see a post indicator valve or PIV. Downstream of the PIV is the FDC, Fire Department Connection. If one or more of the OS and Ys and the PIV were closed, the system could still be pressurized by pumping into the FDC, which is downstream from the valves. The pressure in the water main, roughly 60 to 70 psi, can be raised to hundreds of pounds of pressure by means of one or more electric or diesel driven fire pumps. Let's focus on the FDC. If the intention is to pump two hose lines into the FDC, but you're going to begin by pumping just one hose line. Both plugs have to be removed at the beginning of the operation. Otherwise, if the clapper in the FDC should leak, dangerously high pressure could build up between the plug and the clapper. With a tool, not your hands, probe into the FDC to check for debris, or in this case, an insect nest, that would ultimately end up clogging a nozzle or sprinkler head. It is very common for the female swivels on FDCs to be frozen due to corrosion or paint. Firefighters can improvise their own swivels with double males and female adapters. An alternative is to rotate the hose line several times counterclockwise and then rotate the hose coupling clockwise into the frozen swivel. Pumping into an FDC is a battle of the pressures. If the fire department pumper pumps into the FDC below the pressure that is in the system, it will be unable to force open the one-way check valve that is downstream of the FDC. If, on the other hand, the pumper exceeds system pressure, it will force open the FDC check valve and close the check valve on the discharge piping of the building's fire pump. Usually, fire departments pressurize FDCs as a precaution in the event that the building's fire pump fails or the sprinkler system is overwhelmed because it is flowing more sprinkler heads than the system was designed to flow. There are, however, two suppression systems that pumping the FDC is not a precaution, it is a necessity. First is the construction standpipe. When buildings are under construction, they are only required to have one functioning standpipe, regardless of the size of the building's footprint. Pumping the FDC to a construction standpipe is again a necessity. Second, many buildings in our jurisdiction that do not exceed 75 feet in height are permitted to have manual wet standpipe systems. These systems may be pressurized with a small fire pump, say 300 gallons a minute, but the purpose of the pump is to provide sufficient pressure for the sprinklers, not for a firefighting hose line. 
Pumping FDCs at high pressures is an inherently dangerous operation. Hose lines should be connected to discharges that are not at the pump panel and should be secured with rope or webbing at the apparatus and the FDC. Keep all civilian and fire department personnel clear of the hose lines, apparatus discharges, and the FDC. Here, corrosion has eaten a hole in the FDC piping. This FDC was launched when pressurized to 125 PSI, and corrosion or mechanical damage has taken its toll on this FDC. One of the most common problems with FDCs is the theft of brass female intake swivels. This is such a common problem that a Phoenix Fire Department captain invented a device that engages the grooves of an FDC that is missing a swivel. Early in our recruit training, we were taught that if an FDC cannot be located or is not serviceable, to pump a hose line into a first floor standpipe hose outlet. Here you see a Y being improvised as a Siamese with the use of double females. There is, however, a crucial exception to this procedure. That is when a first floor standpipe outlet is a PRV, pressure reducing valve. In that case, pumping into a PRV will cause it to slam shut like a check valve. We'll examine PRVs in detail in a later video. I hope you've enjoyed these videos. I certainly enjoyed making them. The purpose of these videos was twofold. One, of course, to learn some particulars about the components and functions of fire suppression systems. But more importantly, to inspire firefighters to become students of fire suppression systems. Always ready, proud to serve.